So uh, now the first lecture of our conference will be given by Evgeny Lamakin, Moscow, Russia. And uh, colleagues, you uh, as it uh, you can uh, either sit here or uh, sit in the hall as it's uh, more comfortable for you. And uh, Evgeny, now I pass microphone for you. And the presentation probably will be in a minute on the screen. Uh, first of all, I. Um, would like to thank uh, the organizing committee and uh, personally uh, the conference chairman uh, Dmitry Anatolovich Indeitsev and Anton Irzy uh, Miroslavovich Krivtsov uh, for the invitation to participate and for the opportunity to deliver the plenary lecture at uh, the opening session of this conference. And this presentation is devoted to the analysis, next slide, slide please, uh, to the analysis of some uh, nonlinear effects in the behavior of composite materials, uh, which uh, are observed very often uh, in during the experimental studies. Uh, the first of them is concerned the uh, stress state susceptibility of material properties or the dependence of uh, uh, the properties of composite materials on the type of external forces uh, that is observed very often for many heterogeneous materials. Uh, the second one is concerned uh, the nonlinearity of shear properties of composite materials. And the third uh, type of nonlinearity uh, is displayed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is uh, displayed in the influence uh, of the damage evolution uh, on the deformation properties and uh, failure characteristics um, of composite materials. There are uh, some other types of nonlinearities, but I uh, uh, shall res restrict myself by the consideration of these three types only because it is uh, impossible to tell about all of them uh, in one uh, presentation. Uh, very often uh, we have uh, for many materials uh, that uh, and see that uh, the uh, stress strain curve curves uh, uh, are different for the conditions of uniaxial tension and uniaxial compression but uh, uh, these two types of loadings are only two types among the infinite number of possible stress state types. And uh, if uh, the deformation properties are different for these two particular types of loadings, it means that they are different for other types too. Uh, and we can't restrict ourselves by the consideration of these two particular types only. Uh, and uh, we have to introduce the corresponding uh, parameter of stress type. And okay. yeah. hmm. Uh, yes. Uh, to describe uh, the to describe uh, the um, uh, first type uh, or first type nonlinearity mm -hmm. in the behavior of composite materials, uh, the for we can uh, propose uh, the following potential function uh, uh, for the stress state uh, susceptibility materials and uh, 
uh, and introduce uh, the stress state parameter, which is the uh, ratio of hydrostatic component of stress to the von Mises equivalent stress named uh, stress traceality. And uh, differentiating this function uh, with respect to the stresses, we obtain uh, the um, constitutive re relations. Uh, here they are shown for plain stress conditions, but they can be represented in uh, invariant form too. Instead of a uh, set of constant anisotropic coefficients, uh, in this case we have the set of anisotropic functions. And uh, we have to determine these uh, anisotropic functions on the base of experimental studies. Uh, looking at uh, these constitutive relations, we suddenly we uh, can see that uh, the strains uh, uh, have two parts. The first part corresponds to uh, the deformation of some uh, anisotropic solid, and the second part uh, corresponds to an isotropic solid, because the nature of the second part uh, is isotropic. Uh, and uh, in analyzing these constitutive relations, we suddenly uh, discover that uh, a lucky fact uh, that this uh, complex uh, expression in square brackets reduces to zero when parameter C is equal to one third or plus one third or minus one third, or in the cases of uniaxial uh, tension and uniaxial compression. And this simplifies the determination of the values of these anisotropic functions very much. Uh, in the case of uniaxial tension and uniaxial compression, we have corresponding uh, system uh, uh, which can be solved uh, very uh, simply. And uh, for arbitrary biaxial uh, tests, we have another uh, uh, system of uh, equations and which can be solved too. And uh, uh, for the case of shear, we have this simple relation between shear stress and shear strain. And now some words about a very interesting problem that we have to solve. Um, if the load is applied along the reinforcement, uh, the stress-strain curve uh, almost linear one. But if the load is applied at some angle to the fiber direction, the stress-strain curve are nonlinear. And e and e this nonlinearity begins uh, from the very beginning. And, and an question arises how to describe simultaneously the linear behavior of material in some cases and nonlinear behavior in other cases. And a simple idea. Uh, suddenly occurred to the mind. Uh, uh, all good uh, ideas uh, always uh, um, suddenly uh, arises <laughs> and becomes to us. To us. And, and uh, it was supposed that uh, it is possible to introduce into the constitutive relations uh, a scalar parameter Q, uh, which is related uh, with the corresponding matrix D. Uh, uh, it is written uh, for plain stress conditions, but in the case of uh, arbitrary uh, three-axial stress state conditions, uh, we have uh, 
uh, non-zero components uh, in, uh, in other places uh, out of uh, the main uh, diagonal of this uh, matrix. And in the case uh, of plane stress, con plane stress conditions, uh, uh, if the coordinate system uh, coincides with the NSTRP axis, uh, this uh, scalar parameter is simply equal the shear strain in the plane. And uh, uh, to describe this effect, uh, we can uh, use the following potential function and differentiate, e differentiate it uh, with the respect to the strains. We can obtain the uh, corresponding constitutive uh, relations and uh, the relation between shear stress and shear strain. Uh, it doesn't mean that this uh, relation can be uh, quadratic only, because we have uh, mm, this nonlinear this nonlinear functions uh, g prime and g, uh, which can be represented in uh, polynomial form, and we can approximate uh, the real. Uh, stress strain curves uh, with any precision, whatever you want. Uh, this model was introduced into Abacus and uh, uh, numerical simulation was uh, carried out uh, for the strip uh, with open hole and uh, uh, strip is made uh, of composite materials uh, with uh, um, graphite fibers and uh, epoxy matrix uh, and uh, having uh, plus uh, minus uh, 45 grades lay-up structure. All the material properties were determined uh, on the base of the test of standard specimens under different loading conditions. And uh, you can see here the graph of the dependence uh, between shear stress and shear strain. And uh, uh, low, we have uh, the graph for the uh, shear modulus during the test. And, oh, but how to switch on the movie? I have no mouth. Oh, okay. Yeah, I suppose that <laughs> this movie will not work uh, during the presentation. So I, uh, uh, you can give uh, the results of this uh, numerical simulation. Uh, here you can see the distribution uh, uh, of uh, stresses and uh, here you can see the distribution of strains uh, in cross-section uh, uh, and using this uh, results of numerical simulation we can determine the dependence between the compressive load value of compressive load and uh, displacement at the point of its action. And uh, you can see here uh, the experimental uh, curve denoted by points and uh, uh, the corresponding theoretical dependency. Uh, but um, it, it is observed that the uh, deviation uh, or between these two curves uh, b when uh, the process of damage nucleation initiates. I 
improve this result uh, some later. Uh, and now some words about the uh, united approach. When two types of nonlinearity are taken to into account, the uh, stress state susceptibility of material properties and the nonlinearity of shear properties of composite materials. Uh, to describe these uh, effects, we have to introduce uh, two parameters parameter C and parameter Q, uh, and uh, we can obtain the corresponding constitutive uh, relations uh, which are written here uh, for plain stress conditions. And uh, after some analytical exercises, we can obtain the relation between shear stress and shear stress. And uh, you can see here uh, the results of experimental studies uh, of composite materials on the base of glass uh, fabric and uh, polyether matrix. Uh, the tests were carried, were carried out uh, under conditions of uniaxial tension, uniaxial compression, and shear. And uh, you can see uh, uh, that if the load is uh, our load is applied uh, along the reinforcement uh, or along the warp of the fabric, uh, the uh, diagrams are almost linear. It is uh, what I <laughs> have talked about. Yes, and uh, if the and uh, load is applied at some angle to the warp of the uh, fabric, uh, we the diagrams are nonlinear one. And you can see here that the correspondence between the uh, results of experimental studies and uh, 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 theoretical dependencies uh, is quite satisfactory. But uh, the loading, the process of loading uh, is accompanied by uh, damage evolution. And uh, we can, uh, can't uh, avoid uh, this process. And uh, to describe this nonlinear effect, it is uh, the damage parameters were introduced into constitutive relations. And uh, Two of them was used uh, for this uh, theory. Uh, uh, parameter psi one corresponds to the failure in fiber direction, and parameter psi two uh, corresponds to the failure in uh, transverse direction. And you can see here the, the relation between the strains and stresses. And we have to choose uh, some uh, failure criterion to analyze the results of experimental studies. A very simple criterion uh, was used for this analysis, uh, which uh, include uh, the failure stress uh, and the uh, in the direction in fiber direction, uh, failure stress in uh, transverse direction, uh, uh, failure stress and the compression in fiber fiber uh, direction, and uh, failure stress uh, and the compression of in transverse direction and shear failure stress and. I want to tell you that, that uh, parameter psi 1 has only two values. Uh, primary, it is equal to unity. And uh, if the failure occurs, it is, if this parameter is equal to 0. But the second parameter is variable one. Uh, to keep the stress uh, tensor, on the uh, 
fill uh, surface uh, graph uh, and to determine it, we have this cubic uh, equation and we have to choose uh, the minimum uh, positive uh, real uh, root. And uh, this approach was verified on the comparison with the uh, worldwide fail exercises data, uh, particularly for um, composite tubes. And you can see here uh, that the correspondence between the numerical simulation and uh, the results of experimental studies is quite satisfactory. Uh, and now I come back to the an example uh, that was discussed in the previous part of this uh, presentation uh, or uh, the compression of a strip with uh, open hole and uh, uh, some discrepancy between the experimental dependency of uh, compressive load and displacement and uh, theoretical prediction was observed. Uh, you can see here the uh, shear stress strain shear diagram. And you can see here now the result of s the comparison between the results of uh, numerical simulation and uh, the uh, experiment, the results of experimental studies. And uh, you can see that uh, these two diagrams almost coincide uh, if you take into account the damage evaluation. And uh, you can see here, uh, oh yes, calculations were performed uh, for two cases when uh, shear modulus is constant and when shear modulus uh, is uh, real uh, have real uh, dependence nonlinear dependence on the strain and uh, the second one and you can see that uh, the picture corresponds quite well with the results of experimental studies the same picture and you can see here uh, the development of damage during the loading I would like to tell uh, finally uh, that uh, this approach is a very universal one we can take into account different types of nonlinearity. And uh, you can see here the constitutive relations uh, where uh, not only damage taken into account, but the damage rate too. Uh, and uh, you can see here the uh, experimental dependencies uh, for uh, shear uh, diagrams. Uh, obtained uh, uh, for composite materials with uh, lay up uh, uniaxial lay up uh, plus 45 grades and uh, all these diagrams correspond to different uh, values of strain rate and you can see here the uh, corresponding uh, theoretical dependencies and uh, it is uh, uh, evident that the correspondence between the experimental results and uh, uh, the theoretical dependencies is quite satisfactory too No, and uh, here you can see some conclusions. Everybody can uh, read them. Uh, 
I have told about all of them. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting lecture. And now, please, uh, uh, the session is open for questions. Uh, uh, any questions, please, uh, Professor Smirnov? Mm -hmm. Yes, it works. I found out. So uh, I missed uh, just uh, in in your uh, uh, figures when uh, you had the experiments and uh, experiments in different uh, angles in uh, tension, uh, in compression, yeah. uh, and so comparison of theory and experiments. And there, on all the diagrams, there were curve one and curve two. And so uh, somehow I missed oh. what were the <laughs> cases that uh, just yes. these curves yes, corresponded yes, yes, to. Yes, I missed the, mm, some points. Uh, uh, the curve one corresponds to uh, um, the uh, action of positive uh, stress uh, al along. Elongation, yes, but uh, the second one corresponds to the uh, transverse deformation later. Oh. Yes. <laughs> uh, please, any other questions? Uh, uh huh. What motivates this nonlinear form? Uh, uh, you have, uh, you know, you take some some uh, nonlinearity. The way the nonlinearity is like it, how what it depends on s uh, stress multiplied by that matrix. What mm. motivated? How did you find out? Uh, oh. <laughs> It is impossible to explain uh, because uh, all the ideas uh, suddenly occurred to m our mind uh, and uh, always we uh, don't expect that uh, the result will be such a way obtained. And it is, uh, it is, uh, it is the, the life. Uh, please, uh, any other questions? Uh, the, uh, maybe from myself, uh, there is a very interesting feature uh, that uh, the mm, uh, strain, uh, the deformation depends on the type of the external force. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, can you comment yes. on that? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, very interesting comment and uh, very discussable. Uh, in, in some cases uh, when the uh, nonlinearity of stress and curves is uh, weak, uh, we usually use the linear approximation of weakly nonlinear diagrams. And uh, uh, instead of a set of uh, covilinear stress and curves, yes, we the substitute them by the set of linear stress strain diagrams. And it does not, yes, and it does not mean that the real uh, um, modulus sharply change its value with the change of the science of stresses because it is physically impossible. So it is only the mathematical approximation of real behavior of materials and nothing else. And if we use the theories, we uh, must be very careful what we have, what we did, what we do. Um, but uh, these uh, models can be used uh, for the analysis of real behavior of composite materials under the conditions of dynamic loadings. 
only for uh, quasi-static problem. Okay, thank you very much. Very interesting. So, uh, ah, and from online, uh, uh, we have a question from uh, uh, from uh, Dmitry Indeitsov. Uh, Dmitry Anatolyevich, can you? Uh, yes, of course. Uh -huh. It's it what was very interesting, as usually, to listen, my dear Evgeny Lamakin. It was very interesting, and everybody can find interesting for himself, of course. But my question will be so: parameter Q is depending of anisotropia, and of course, depending of the compression. And my question will be so: if I want to uh, to see the influence of temperature. What do you think? Uh, classical step and uh, it's a uh, Glodugonia name and it's not will be well. How do you think? How do you use your model for temperature problem for composition? I didn't think about this, but I think uh, you know me. And uh, if the problem is arises, uh, we always have uh, the way how to solve it. Much thanks, dear Gold. Much thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, let us thank once more uh, Professor Lamakin for a very interesting lecture. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.